I'm working through the fertilizer section of the 2019 chemistry paper, which starts with question 1.10, a multiple choice question which reads as follows. Which one of the following is used as a catalyst in the Ostwald process? And the Ostwald process requires a platinum catalyst, so option C is the correct answer there. Question 10 in the chemistry paper is always a fertilizers question, and question 10 reads as follows. The flow diagram below shows the processes involved in the industrial preparation of an ammonium fertilizer, and here we can see a flow diagram in which gas X reacts with nitrogen gas to form compound P, and the only gas that reacts with nitrogen in our knowledge of fertilizers is hydrogen, where we know that hydrogen would react with nitrogen to form ammonia, NH3. And then we can follow this process where we know that ammonia is always going to react with oxygen firstly to form nitrogen monoxide, which then goes on to form nitrogen dioxide, and then eventually becomes an acid when it reacts with water, that acid being nitric acid. The purpose of these two processes here is to combine them, the ammonia and the nitric acid, to form what we know is eventually ammonium nitrate, which is a very common fertilizer. So now that we have an understanding of what this flow diagram here represents, we can look at the question. So question 10.1 reads, write down the name or the formula of compound X, so either the name or the formula either hydrogen gas or just H2. 10.1.2 asks for the name or the formula of compound Y. As we've said here, compound Y must be nitrogen monoxide. And that can be also just the formula in O. Question 10.1.3. The name or the formula of acid Q that we form and that is formed in the reaction between nitrogen dioxide and water which is nitric acid, HNO3. Then that brings us to question 10.2, which asks, write down the type of chemical reaction that co converts compound P into gas Y. And as we can see, compound P reacts with oxygen, and we know that a reaction with oxygen is always simply an oxidation reaction. Strictly speaking, we can call this a catalytic, or we would call this a catalytic oxidation reaction. It is also, because of the exchange of electrons, it is also called a redox reaction, which would also be an acceptable answer. Question 10.2.2 reads, write down the balanced equation for the reaction between compound P and acid Q. Compound P, as we've said already, was ammonia, NH3. Acid Q, we've already found, was nitric acid, that is HNO3, and as we have said here, that is going to react to form ammonium nitrate, NH4, NO3. And now we can see here that this equation, as we have written it here, is balanced. Two nitrogens in the reactants, two in the products, four hydrogens in the reactants, four in the products and three oxygen in the reactants, three in the products. Now, it hasn't been asked, but it is important to realize that this process represented here is known as the Haber process, and this process, the production of nitric acid, is known as the Ostwald process. A, a common question could be to name the process, and we know that the Haber process is used in the production of ammonia, NH3, the Ostwald process is used in the production of nitric acid, HNO3, and one that is not mentioned here is the contact process, which is used in the production of sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Question 10.3 now reads, two separate bags of fertilizer are labeled as follows, and we have bag A, and bag B, where we know that this ratio given here is known as the NPK ratio, the ratio of nitrogen to phosphorus to potassium. And this number in brackets here tells us the percentage purity or the amount of 
fertilizer that is actually in the bag and then obviously that gives us our mass of fertilizer. So question 10.3.1 asks what do the numbers 21 and 27 represent and as we've just said it is the percentage nutrients in the fertilizer. It is the amount of nutrient that you get in a bag of fertilizer. This tells us that only 21% of this bag of this 50 kilograms is actually fertilizer. The rest is known as filler. Question 10.3.2 asks us to determine by means of calculations which bag A or B contains a greater mass of phosphorus. And so our first step here needs to be to calculate the actual mass of fertilizer in each bag. And we do that by saying the mass of fertilizer is equal to the mass of a bag, in this case that is 50 kilograms, multiplied by the percentage nutrients, which is 21, as a percentage 21 over 100, which tells us that in this 50 kilogram bag, we actually have 10.5 kilograms of fertilizer. The same calculation for bag B tells us that a 40 kilogram bag that is 27% nutrients would give us a total mass of 10.8 kilograms of fertilizer. What this question however asks is what mass or which one of these has the greater mass of phosphorus and to determine the mass of phosphorus what we can say here is we can say the mass of phosphorus is equal to the percentage phosphorus out of all of the nutrients present we can see that in bag A there are 1 plus 3 plus 4 there are 8 nutrients present of which 3 of those 8 are phosphorus and so that tells us that 3 eighths of this mass is phosphorus so 3 eighths multiplied by the 10.5 kilograms in this bag and that would suggest to us or that would tell us then that there are 3.94 kilograms of phosphorus in bag A. In bag B, we once again say that there are 8 units of nutrients here. So the mass of phosphorus in bag B is once again, out of the 8 nutrients, we say that 3 of those 8 are phosphorus. Multiply that by the mass of a bag of fertilizer, which we calculated above here and found was 10.8 kilograms. And that then tells us that there must be 4.05 kilograms of phosphorus in bag B. And now we can answer the question, determine by means of a calculation which bag A or B contains a greater mass of phosphorus. And then the answer there is that bag B contains the greater mass of phosphorus because we have started by finding out what mass of each bag is fertilizer by using the number in brackets and then using the ratio we can see that out of eight units three of them are phosphorus in bag A and three out of eight are phosphorus in bag B so we multiply three eighths by the mass of bag A and three eighths by the mass of bag B to find the respective masses of phosphorus in each bag and we find that bag B has a greater mass of phosphorus in it.